Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the woods. Now in the last video, we looked at our winter preparations, the stuff that we can do to get our bushcraft gear ready for the winter season to come. And in this one, we're gonna carry that theme on and we are gonna look at our extremities and what we can do to help those out in those cold months ahead. But first, the kettle's boiled, so I'm gonna get a cup of tea on the go. Now this is something you could throw a whole lot of money at, and an awful lot of people do. But if you know anything about me, and if you've watched this channel a lot, you know that's not what I'm all about. So I'm gonna show you the stuff that I use, that is cost effective, but still gets the job done. In some cases, it's even items you can make yourself. Now, as with all things outdoor clothing wise, the most effective way to dress is, as we know, the layer system. And our extremities are no exception. So, without further ado, what we're gonna do, we'll crack on, and we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. So the first item I'm gonna start off with is this. My cotton ball cap. Now, I get quite a few questions about this where did I get it from, etc, etc. Well, this came off eBay and this is the second one I've had. The last one I bought in 1999 uh, in a shop called Hawkshead in Taunton. And uh, it actually finally gave up the ghost last year. So that's 20 years use I've had out of it. I managed to find another company on eBay that sells pretty much an identical cap. Now, what this hat actually is, is a waxed cotton baseball cap. And the reason I go for the waxed cotton ones is, number one, the waxed fabric. It's a very lightweight cotton. They're lined too. And it keeps the wind and the weather out. Because it's waxed, water runs off it. And I know some of you are going to say, yeah, but they get very hot and sweaty in the summer. Well those of you who are really eagle-eyed will notice in the summer this one looks a lighter colour and that's because what I do is I use a nail brush and some soap and I scrub the wax out so that it breathes better during the summer months. In the winter I reapply wax to it and if you notice over the last couple of videos this one suddenly got very much darker and that's because last week I reapplied my wax. I don't use the expensive Greenland type wax I just use the, the cheapo wax dressing that you can pick up uh, on eBay in tins that will last you for years and indeed mine has. I've got a little tiny bit left in the bottom which will probably do this cap another couple of years. So the waxed cotton baseball cap. Now the reason I like a baseball cap is it's got this peak and that peak helps to keep not only the sun out of your eyes, but also the rain and the wind and the snow and all those other weather conditions we get in the winter. If you're using a hood, when you flip the hood up, if it hasn't got a visor or not a very good visor on the hood, it doesn't matter if you're using a cap because this does all that for you. What's more, when you turn your head to the left and the right, like so, the hood moves with you because the peak helps it move, like so. All keeps it in place where we need it and it keeps your face protected. And the last reason I like these particular caps is they're one size fits all, they're adjustable, and that helps it fit into a system. So the next item that I use on my head is this, a simple 100% wool beanie. And this is the watch type cap uh, and, and they're double thickness. So they're two layers of wool and they are bomb proof. Some people don't like them. They say that they're a bit itchy. 
I've used them for a very, very long time and they are very, very good. They can be used with the sides rolled up. So if I'm working uh, or if I'm in a position where I need to be able to hear, perhaps I'm teaching, etc., then I have the sides rolled up. So it's a double thickness all the way around. Because it's double thickness throughout, it also means it's trapping that little extra layer of warmth inside it as well. If I'm out during the daytime and it's really, really cold, if I'm just chucking it on to warm up, then I wear it in a proper beanie style, pulled right down over my ears and over the nape of my neck. Because it's wool, it's also fire retardant, which means it's safe for using around the fire. But also, if I'm really honest, this one quite often gets used instead of reaching into my pack for my work gloves. If this is in my pocket or on my head, I take it off and I use this for handling hot things. It's wool, it's not going to melt. Also, because it's wool, it doesn't get cold when it's wet. It still helps to keep you warm. And the other great thing about wool, and I don't know whether this is proven or not, it actually sort of helps regulate its own temperature. I find with the synthetic hats, you're continually having to take them off, put them back on because your head overheats. With these, they keep your head nice and warm and you don't have to keep taking it off because it overheats. They're very, very good, very, very effective, and they don't cost a lot of money. I tend to carry two. I have one which is for use during the daytime and then there's another one in my sleep gear which helps to keep my head warm while I'm sleeping. And by keeping it there, it's always dry for when I go to sleep. And that's mega important come the winter time. My next item is one of these. It's a neck gaiter or a buff and they are designed to wear around here uh, and they help to seal in the heat around your core by doing up that hole that sits in there. Warm air rises, so all that heat is going to escape up through your collar. This helps to stop that happening. Because it's a long tube, it can also be used like a balaclava, so it can be pulled up over your face, all up around your ears, you can pull it up over your head. And again with these, I carry two. There's one that I use during the day, and then I've got a separate uh, light merino one that I use in my sleeping bag at night. And it stays in the dry bag with my sleeping bag, so it's always, always dry. And the last little headwear combo that I tend to use is this and this combined. That's why I like them adjustable at the back. That way, when it gets really cold, or it's really cold, wet, etc., I can use this one and this one in combination. Now, what I see a lot of people do, probably the more trendy bushcraft type, is they pull this on over the top of their, their ball cap, which is, is there for convenience. And if that works for them, that's absolutely fine. I take this off, put this on, and then put that back on over the top. That way, it traps the warm air inside my woolen hat, but it's protected from wind and rain by the wax cotton of my baseball cap. It adds to that layering system and it makes it that bit more effective. If you just put this on over the top of your ball cap and it's chucking it down with rain, well, all you're gonna do is end up getting this wet. And if it's wet, that then means it's not quite as effective. It also means you've got to take time drying it all. So that's headwear covered. Next thing we're going to look at is our hands, and they need looking after, well, pretty much at all times of the year. Now, I use these uh, as my leather work gloves, and leather gloves make sense if you've got to handle a lot of stuff that, that's rough, or you're handling stuff that is hot, um, or it's stuff where it's repeated use. So sometimes if I'm digging, etc., I'm going to chuck a set of gloves on. And leather work gloves work very, very well. Now there's lots of different types out there and you can pay some very serious money for some of these, these leather type gloves. I've seen some amazing prices. Now the ones I use are these. And these are Army Surplus, surprise, surprise. They are the old Soldier 95 gloves. 
They are made from a very fine leather, made to a contract of very, very high spec. They are Gore-Tex lined, but I had a problem with the Gore-Tex. Number one, it made them quite difficult to get on. It also made them difficult to get off and it made them very, very bulky. Yes, it gave them insulation and weatherproofness, but I didn't like them. Also, when you buy them surplus, quite often the Gore-Tex is damaged and leaky anyway. That's why they are surplus. Somebody handed them in because they don't work anymore. So all I did with mine was I cut the Gore-Tex lining out. It's literally just a matter of trimming around the top there, cutting it out. What you've then got is a very lightweight, very good working glove. All I do with them is as the season starts, I just go over with a little bit of dubbing and I put a little bit on both gloves, rub them together like so, get it really worked in and that's then proofed. So that is my, my work glove. It also helps to protect my hands from the wet and the wind because they're windproof and relatively waterproof too. Now while those gloves are great for protecting your hands from the elements and also protecting them from the environment, they're not designed as a warm glove. So for that I use these. And these are little cheapo Mericlon one size fits all thermal gloves. I've used them, God, I first started using them when I, was, when I was doing a lot of running many, many years ago, back in the 80s. Um, and discovered what a brilliant piece of kit they are. As soon as you put them on, your hands start to warm up. They're very, very small and lightweight, and they are a superb little item. They're very inexpensive. Um, you can buy them new, you can buy them used through the surplus stores, because I think they were an issue item as well. And they are superb. An excellent part of your layering system for your hands. You can team these up with the Soldier 95 gloves. All you do is you pull these on and then you pull those on over the top. So if your hands are cold, you can put them into these and then pull your work glove on over the top and your hands will instantly get warmer. Now when the weather gets really, really cold, and the temperature starts to plummet and we get snow on the ground, which alas doesn't happen that much anymore uh, in the UK. Certainly not in my part of the UK, but when it does, or if I'm traveling to, to other parts of the country where it is cold and you do get snow, then I use these. And these are my duffel mitts. All they are is a Ventile and Cordura basic mitt. They're connected by a cord so they can be worn around my neck, so they're always there. They can be used independently, so I can use just the duffel liner. And these are basically a bag for your hands, but they are great. They're made from a recycled blanket from one of my blanket smock projects. They were the leftovers I had, uh, and they, they are superb. I can use those in conjunction with the outer, or what I can do is I can use this with my little thermal glove. And if I'm digging snow holes, that tends to be my, my preferred um, system for my hands because uh, I've got the lightness and the warmth of the, the little Mericlon thermal gloves and the protection afforded by these weatherproof mitts. So we've covered our heads, we've covered our hands, and the last extremity we're gonna look at is our feet, because your feet in the winter can take quite a battering. They're down there 
in contact with the earth that tends to be an awful lot colder and an awful lot wetter than it is for the rest of the year. So our feet can get quite cold and quite uncomfortable if we don't prepare to look after them. As with our head and our hands, the layer system is important. And what I use is a light pair of socks. And these are bamboo ones, and these are, are called green treat. Uh, and you can buy them in packs from TK Maxx. Uh, I think they're like packs of five, and they'll cost you about six quid. Um, I tend to get one of those packs every couple of years, and they're my, my go-to sock. They're lightweight, they're comfortable. They feel a little bit like cross between silk and Mericlon, and I find they're very good. They're hard wearing, they're cheap, uh, and they do the job. Over that, I use these. And these are extreme cold weather socks, or socks Arctic, uh, and they're again a military surplus item. They're a wool mix, which is mostly wool, they're quite long, so they come up well over the top of your boots, up over your shins to just below your knee. They are a loop stitch construction, like so. And they're all round very, very good. Again, not particularly expensive, certainly not if you compare them to some of the other socks that are out there. Uh, I saw some the other day, which I think were 30 odd pounds for a pair of socks. One of the other things that uh, I've noticed with a lot of the designer socks is they have a, an L and an R on there, so you know which foot to put them on. Actually, call me sceptical, but I think that's so that you put them on the same foot every time. And what that does is that increases the wear to those same areas, so the socks wear out quicker, so you have to go and buy a new pair of very overpriced socks. These don't have that. These are uni socks. You can wear them on either foot. And they last longer. Again, with these, I tend to get, oh, blimey, uh, five or six years out of a pair of these socks. I always keep a new pair on hand for when a set wears out, and I think I rotate through about four sets of these at any one time. Brilliant, brilliant item. Something else that's quite popular these days are these. And these are the, the seal skin duty socks. A great item if you use lightweight footwear or the barefoot type shoes, etc., that aren't usually waterproof, then a set of these are a must. They're a wool mix line. I think they're a merino job with a Porel, I think, waterproof, breathable outer and I found them to be very, very good. They're cut nice and long, so they come up again to just below your knees, and if the weather is wet, these make a whole lot of sense. They come with a little Ziploc bag, uh, and I carry them in with my, my day sack during the day, uh, for just in case my boots do start to leak. Seal skin duty socks, good, good bit of kit. Because a lot of uh, footwear nowadays, it says it's Gore-Tex and it's, it's, it's lined and it's insulated and it's 100% waterproof, which I don't particularly like. I like a, 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 either an unlined boot or a boot that's lined with Cambrel or ideally leather. And with those, sometimes uh, the water does come through a little bit, but not often. The most common place that water comes through, particularly if you're walking through uh, long grass and vegetation, is it comes off the vegetation, goes onto the bottom of your trousers, and then it drains down through the fabric and into the top of your boots. A set of gaiters stops that happening, okay? And these are, there's lots of different types of gaiters out there. Uh, for years I used the, the cotton canvas ones. When I was out in the hills, I used the, the Yeti type gaiters that, that clipped onto your mountain boots. All these are uh, a very cheap, Army snow gaiters. Uh, they're made from some sort of uh, MVP, breathable type material that's waterproof, and it keeps all the mud and the water and the crap off the bottoms of your trousers, and more importantly, out the tops of your boots. So, a set of gaiters for winter use, they make an awful lot of sense. They're inexpensive to buy, and I think every 
good bushcraft, I should have a set of these. So there you go, that's my take on how to look after your extremities in the winter season to come. Hopefully a lot of it is gear that you've already got. If it's not, hopefully I've given you a few ideas of how you can utilize what you've already got, maybe with a couple of extra bits that you need to go and buy. However, those bits are going to be cheap and cost effective. If it's something like the mitts, if you're interested in a set of those, if you go back into my videos, I'll try and put a link in the box underneath for my how to make yourself a set of those mitts. They're an easy, easy project to make. They don't take very long. You don't even need a proper pattern. It shows you how to do that in the video. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. You can follow me over on Instagram and Facebook. I'm greencraft uh, underscore zero one on Instagram and just greencraft on Facebook. But again, I'll put links down below. There's also a link in there for my Patreon page. If you want to get involved with the channel, then follow that link, subscribe, etc. etc. Please do, it helps out a lot. Also, over there in that little box underneath, you will find a link to my Etsy shop. And over there, you'll find a few items up for sale my Fubar headbands, my little green craft patches my Greencraft enamel mugs with the logo and the legend written around the side. And also, coming up on there, are gonna be the little patches for on your caps. They're made of leather, they're gonna be pyrographed, etc., etc. The first lot are inbound as we speak. So, keep watching the channel for an update on those. I think that's everything. I've been Neil, until next time, stay safe.